What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? I, 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 Cowboy Nation, stand up. <laughs> what you got in your cup? Ow, wow. You see that smoke? <laughs> I ain't about to taste this no time soon. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Thank you for all the love on my outfit of the day, you guys. I was a big hit. I made big hits. I took good pictures. I flexed and I was cute. So thank you uh, for the thumbs up. Uh, what else? Welcome to See What Rita's Cooking. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm glad to have you on this video. I hope you'll see something here that'll make you want to click on more videos. Remember when you click on these videos, you guys, when you view them, please give me a thumbs up for my efforts. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs up. I would do it for you if you ask. I would. Okay, what else? Make sure that you're going and searching different things in the search engine uh, to find out if I've made something before because like I said, I almost have 200 videos on YouTube. So see what Rita's cooking and then put what you're looking for. Nine times out of 10, I've done that video. Also, you guys, it's hard coming up with something different all the time. So if you have something you want me to try, I will try it if it makes sense. I'm not going out killing no goat and, and making no goat. I'm not doing little Bo Peep. I like, you know, people love lamb, but, you know, I just, I always see, you know, little Bo Peep in them. I, so I'm not going to be making any lamb, and I know it's good meat, but I just don't like it. I'm going to be sweating because I'm in this kitchen, and I'm already, I've already got some, my oven fries. My wedges, my oven fries, they are in the oven because today, baby, I'm going to make something quick. I'm not going to start saying quick. I'm going to make something that I think you guys will like. And I think it will be something that you will want to. Mm. Mm. Try for your family as well. And that is my cheese steak sliders. I also have a chicken cheese steak slider already on the web uh, already on my youtube page these are going to be with steak i am going to be using sirloin steak that has already i bought it thin and then i cut it in these little strips so i'm going to be using actual um actual steak uh with these cheese steak sliders and um that's it. I'm going to be putting it with my wedges. But the video is about the cheese steak slider. So let's get into it. Let's go. Let me move you where I want you. Hold on. I meant to pause y'all, not stop y'all. But anyway, I'm going to put y'all right over here so you can see, right? Go there just a little bit. Now, this is not nothing exciting. Like I said, I have me some. Sorry, y'all, for all this movement. What's going on? I'm trying to. Go down just a little bit, okay? And um, like I said, this is just some some sirloin steak. It's thin. I don't know if y'all seen. Let me show y'all the package. I got it from Walmart. And it's just this stir, this uh, sirloin tip, and it's thin little. Uh, little thin uh, cuts of this and I just cut it down, okay? So, that's what I'm using. I wanted to use some ribeye, but I couldn't find me no ribeye steak, so that's what I'm on with the sirloin, okay? I got my hot skillet. It's already been getting hot, waiting for us to get it going, so let's get it going. Gonna start by cooking my steak. I'm gonna be doing 24 sliders. Okay. This is gonna be great, you guys, for football games and gatherings, for get-togethers during the football season, and even during the during the holidays, you can use this. 
we always have a theme. We, we used to have a theme when we would do uh, our uh, holiday uh, get together. You know, so this would be a great one, you guys. Always a big hit. One thing about a cheese steak, if you're going to try to keep it as close to the original cheese steak, you need a good uh, steak, okay? I'm going to be seasoning this steak with just some steak seasoning. This one is kind of hot, so y'all know that Badia is my people. They need to be sponsoring me. I need to reach out to them. Um, this is Badia Steak Seasoning Canadian Blend. It's got a little kick to it, so I don't know if it's for everyone, but it's definitely for me. I love it. And um, the only other seasoning I'm going to be using is my body of seasonal, okay? Just like a, you know, just like a, what do you call it? It's a, what you call it? Y'all know that real popular uh, seasoning that a lot of people use. Uh, I can't think of it right now. So I'm going to cook this steak up. What you want to cook this steak up to whatever temperature you want it to be at. This is going to be going in the oven. So I'm going to cook it pretty much medium well done. Or close to well done probably. And then I'm going to drain it. And I'm, I'm going to be putting my vegetables in there. But when you want to have a, like I was saying, a pretty... Uh, Close to the original. You got a good steak. You got a good bread. <clears throat> they usually put mayonnaise on the bread. Um, you usually have some onions and some peppers. Uh, I'm going to have onions, red and green bell peppers, and I'm going to have uh, mushrooms. And I have this whole container full. Now, I don't know how much of this I'm going to use. But once I uh, drain my um, steak, I'll decide how much of this I want to use. But again, I have green, yellow, uh, green, red bell peppers. And I just did the little thing like that. And my onions are done the same way. And I have some mushrooms that I've chopped pretty finely. Because remember, these are uh, going to be cheese uh, steak sliders. So they're going to be on a smaller bun. I'm going to show you what I put on, what I spread on my bottom uh, bread. And then um, my cheeses are going to be white American cheese and provolone, provolone cheese. So those are the two cheeses that I'm going to be using. So right now we're just going to let this meat cook. I'm going to drain this meat. We're going to add our um, vegetables. I'm going to show you what I put on my bun. I'm going to be using a sweet Hawaiian slider bun. Okay. And I already told you what kind of cheese I'm going to use. So we're going to do some of this stuff and then we're going to be back. Okay. Okay. Now I got my meat all good and cooked up. Took about eight minutes. Ten minutes top. I'm not going to drain it right now. I'm going to put my vegetables in here and get my vegetables all uh, uh, sauteed up. I'm going to start with about half of this. This is a lot. I might end up using it all, but I'm going to try not to just dump it all in there. If it all falls down, it just all falls down. Girl. I did okay. Okay. So now we're going to stir this in there. Let it get all, you know, acquainted. Y'all know I like a little, little bone chicka, bone, bone. Hey, mixing, matching. We all are one. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cook this down and get this in here to the consistency that I like. I just like my, I like, uh, I like to get my peppers and stuff pretty much cook down the way I like them because once they go in the oven, you're not gonna really get to them. Girl, you use a whole thing, sis. You're uh, not gonna have an opportunity for, um, you know, really too much cooking to go on. What's really happening when you put your, um, your uh, sliders in the oven is you're just melting your cheese. That's really what's happening. So you need to get your filling like you like it. Now, some people put a cheese with, uh, filling into their uh, 
meat and onions and stuff. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to use my American. And I got slices, you guys. I didn't uh, do any shredding. So I'm going to cut this, cook this down the way I like it. And I, may, I might not drain it. I'm going to see. And I'll let you know what I decide to do. But I just want this to cook down. I want to get these peppers a little bit more cooked down. Get those onions cooked down. Get them all those flavors in here mixed together. And then I will see you right back. Don't they look good? Are y'all getting a good view? I'm sorry, you guys. So that now y'all can see that I'm a little stuff in here. All right, I'll make sure y'all got a good, a good view next time, okay? Hold on just a second. So while I'm letting that uh, meat uh, and onion mixture get reacquainted and get all mixed up, I'm going to show you guys what I do to my bread bottoms. Now this is mayonnaise mixed with some uh, cream cheese. The cream cheese is my onion and uh, chive and onion cream cheese. Remember I had used this when I did my, um, what do you call those? My egg rolls. Um, and I had a whole container left. So um, I said, well, I'm going to use some of that. I got about half of that container, and that's an eight ounce, I think. Let me make sure. I think it is, y'all. You know I can't find them when I want to. Yeah, I think this is an eight ounce. And I took about four ounces of it, and then I mixed about... The same thing of mayonnaise in here together, you guys. And I'm going to just spread this on my buns, bottoms, okay? Just, just like this. This ain't nothing exciting. I just wanted you to know what I put on the bottom of my bread so you don't have to watch me do this. But, again, this is mayonnaise and cream cheese, the onion and chive kind. You don't have to put anything on your bread. This is just something that I do just for that extra creaminess um, and the extra burst of flavor. Okay? Okay, y'all, so we have our meat done. As you can see it up here. And we have our buns, you know, prepared. You don't have to put anything on the bottom, you guys, so don't feel the pressure of that. Uh, but a good, some mayonnaise on there won't hurt it. But it won't hurt, it won't taste any, you know, it's going to be good if you don't put nothing on the bread. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're just going to put our uh, meat down on here, you guys. All right? Y'all see that? Okay. Put our meat down on here, our little mixture. I didn't um, do a whole lot of draining, but I did drain it, you guys. This is about, I used two packages of that steak, and each one of those packages had like three thin um, uh, cut of steak in there. And then I probably happened those and then made these strips, okay? So, two packages of steak. You can also use steak them, you guys, as long as you um, uh, season that thing up and put you some onions and stuff in there. Steak them will be just as good as uh, doing it this way, okay? So, don't feel the stress to have to buy some steak, uh, you know, or, or get some steak from your butcher or, or you know, uh, high cut steak and all of that. Don't worry about that. This will be just as good if you just use you some regular old steakum. You can find steakum in the um, fr freezer department uh, of your store, uh, grocery stores, and um, Walmart uh, have have the steakum brand. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm gonna show you guys. You can do that with fajitas as well. Uh, the Steakum brand. So don't feel the stress of doing this. I just wanted uh, it is at uh, close to cheesesteak, you know, that I'm used to getting at the restaurant as I could get it. So that's why come I went with uh, some steak, okay? Now, I don't know if y'all know I have that little uh, thing about my tops of my, <laughs> my tops of my buns, slider buns have to match my bottoms. <laughs> 
I have an illness, you guys. I have an illness. You know what? I don't even have my um uh cheese out. So let me finish putting all the the meat on here and then I'm gonna get my cheese out. Okay, you guys, so let me show you what I do. Once I have my meat down and I've got it all spread out like I want it, and everybody's looking like they got some good onions on them and good peppers. Um what I do now is I go in and I uh, put my cheese on. Now, I told you guys I was going to be using some American and some uh, provolone cheese, white American and provolone cheese. And this is what I do. Um, I take a piece of the round provolone. It's like this in the package, right? I take a half of it and a half of my white American, you guys. And I go through the <laughs> motions of just putting these on there like this. This is just me, you guys. You can use one cheese and be happy and it will be totally fine. But y'all know it ain't Rita Ties if, let me put that to the end a little bit, to the edge a little bit. It's not Rita Ties if I have to do everything that somebody else would do. Uh, it's only read the ties if I show you how I do mine. Now, of course, you don't have to read the ties yours because this takes a little a little time. You got to tear up your cheese and have it. I normally will tear me up some <clears throat> and just have me some, you know, just broke up like this. And so all I have to do is just go in and do whatever I need to do, okay? And I'll come back and do like this. And this is a lot, it's a lot faster that way if you go ahead on and prep your cheese and get it ready to go on top, okay? So that's normally what I do. I have my hands with my cheese in it already, and I do like that. So I'm going to do the rest of this, and then I'm going to show you guys what I dust on the top of my buns to just take it over the top just a little bit more. Hold on just a second. Okay, you guys, so I'm done with my cheese. So I just want to show you how my cheese looked on the top, okay? And when I tell you guys that I'm kind of crazy about matching up my buns to my tops, this is what I mean. I set my buns to the, to the side, the tops, to match the bottoms because the bottoms, they're going to get all cheesy and stuff like that, and that's fine. I want that. But this kind of gauges and keeps you knowing where your sandwich is okay so what i do is i line that same top with that bottom i look for that edge or whatever and that kind of helps us get it out okay so i hope that makes sense and then i'm going to show you guys how i make a little butter sauce to go on the top of this okay so see when we get them out they'll be easy to come out i just like to do this like this <clears throat> And it just kind of keeps you kind of gauged and kind of in line on what you want to do. Okay? So now we have all our tops on there, right? So now I have about two to three tablespoons of um, butter. And what I'm going to do, you guys, is I'm going to put some uh, Dijon mustard in here. About a tablespoon. Everything will be getting about a, golly, well, I kept this white blouse uh, <laughs> clean way longer than I thought I would. Okay? Okay, Dijon Mustard, you're going to get your butt somewhere in the counter and they're going to get used by the Lord. You just don't spread, spread everywhere. Stupid. I'm going to put a little Italian seasoning in here. Like I said, a tablespoon of each thing, you guys. This you can do. You don't have to do. You can just do some butter and some garlic powder or garlic salt. Okay, this is some garlic salt. For that saltiness, I got some butter in there. I'm going to... um. Put a little Worcestershire. Okay, everything wants to be brand new and stuck and all this good stuff today. Yeah, that's a brand new one. I know I have one in the icebox too. That makes me mad. Like a tablespoon of that. A war war. Of some war war. I'm not even gonna put that back on right now. Still trying to get on my nerve. And this, you have to be careful with this one, you guys. But this gives it a great taste. But it will cause your, cause your bun to uh, get darker quick. So that's some uh, brown sugar, you guys. I'm going to melt this for just a couple of seconds. And uh, we're going to brush this on the top. I'm going to put some sesame seeds in here. And we're going to brush this topping. And we're going to let them cook. Let me let this melt right quick. And then I'll come back back. I don't want y'all looking at 
Okay, y'all. So what I tell y'all all the time, taste stuff. For some reason, I didn't like that sauce. And I've made that sauce for my uh, sliders, uh, cheesesteak sliders before. But something wasn't, something was off for me. It could have been that bottom of the jar mustard. I don't know. So I went with taste that I know will go good together. So I have my brown sugar, my butter, and uh, the Worcestershire sauce, okay? So I'm just going to. Go across this now remember what i said that brown sugar is going to cause your um buns to get browner because that's just what brown sugar do so if you uh want that aesthetic to be beautiful um don't want it to look too brown on the top then you know you can skip that you don't have to put a topping on the top you can just do butter and garlic powder or something like that it don't have to be but I just think something needs to be on that top bun just to give the whole bite uh, some seasonings. And then I just go between and go down and, you know, on the bun and kind of down in there in the crevices. And then that's what I'm going to do to both of them. I'm going to put them in a 350 degree oven. And it's going to take about 15 minutes, you guys. And that's it. Because all we need to happen is for everything to get hot and lovely. This is the same thing, about three tablespoons of butter, um, a tablespoon of brown sugar, uh, a half a tablespoon of uh, Worcestershire sauce, okay? That's all this is. What I'm going to do also, you guys, let me show you before I let you go. I'm just going to sprinkle down on my uh, buns a little uh, sesame seeds. Just like this. Just to give them a little zhuzh, 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 okay? Y'all know I am about zhuzhing. Y'all know I am about cute food, honey. This is no exception to the rule. Now, didn't that make it cute? Or did they make it cute? Okay? So, I'll be back when they're ready. Okay, y'all. I'm back. And this be them. Oh, God. Okay? Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that and see. All right. So this is my oven fries. If you haven't made you some yet, make sure you get on there and see what Rita's cooking. Oven fries. They're so delicious. All righty. So let's see which ones we want. It's going to go right here and get us some out. Ooh. So this is my son's plate. He's ready. I done cleaned up everything. I had time to clean up everything while my while the meat was in there and getting all yummed up. But I'm not ready to eat yet, y'all. So let me see. Y'all remember what I told y'all about? I need something a little bit smaller. About um about having that little barrier. So that gives you a little barrier about where to get your uh, cheese from. So y'all get your piece from. So there it is, y'all. Look at that. Would ya, would ya look at it? Look at the cheese, friend. Look at the cheese, friend. Mm. <laughs> yes, so uh, Jesus loves me. Cause he made stuff like this for me. Uh, woo! Honey, bunches of oats. I'm thinking he gonna probably want three of these. I'm gonna give him three of these. I'm gonna put them right up here just like this. Oh, okay, cheese. You tripping. There you have it. Look at that. Cheese steak sliders. I'm gonna... Let you up a little bit so I can give you a better, better view of that. And I cooked them on 350 for 15 minutes covered with foil. And then I turned the heat up to 375 and cooked it uncovered for another five minutes. Mmm. Want me to taste it? I don't want to taste it, y'all. Mmm, my steak is delicious. Are you gonna make some? 
I hope you're going to make some. This is perfect for game day, you guys. This is my cheese steak sliders. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up for this video. Any videos you've watched and you've forgotten to give me a thumbs up, please go. Just thumbs up. Just go in there. You ain't got to listen to me talk. Just thumbs up all my videos. And <laughs> I really appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, share. And don't forget to subscribe, honey, because why? Your food ain't all the way live until it's been read a size. See you guys on the next one. I love you guys. Bye.